Uh, looking at your program, and I'm wondering, when we take the Bible and what you were just talking about with that other guy, and you take, no, let's not say the Bible. Let's just go from creationist, and then we go with evolutionist. Let's go all the way back, because here's a tripped out thought right here. If you take it all the way back, all the way back I'm talking where? about all the way back before there was time. Did you know, I just thought about well, creationist uh, and evolutionist agree on one thing. Um, first of all, I, I don't agree with your premise that you can take it back to before there was time. Okay, well, there was a singularity when they said that there was a point in time where there was nothing. That's what evolution said. They, they, you go back in time to a point no, where there actually, was absolutely no molecules, no, no nothing, no. and all of a sudden there was a bang. No, no. Uh, no. First of all, evolution relates to biology. It only deals with what happens to life after it forms. It has nothing to do with cosmology or the universe or abiogenesis or anything like that. So evolution, oh, has, okay, okay. evolution has nothing to say on that. However, the, uh, what, what you're saying about uh, going back to a time when there was nothing, um, while we don't know exactly how the universe started, the, the prevalent theories don't say there wasn't anything. As a matter of fact, the first law of thermodynamics is that uh, nothing, uh, matter and energy can't be created or destroyed. They can only change form. So that would dictate that the universe has always existed in some form. Now, can you the, give me a lowdown on the Big Bang Theory then? What, what is the Big Bang Theory in your mind? That's, that's kind of what I was just doing. Basically, if you trace back, and, and the Big Bang has been confirmed, it's as much of a, a confirmed uh, theory slash fact as anything else you'll find. The cosmic okay. background microwave radiation, um, which was predicted by the Big Bang Theory, has been measured, and it matches dot for dot. Um, oh, but oh. 14 and a half billion years ago or so, um, yeah. The math, we can't get back past the Planck time, which is a, a, a very tiny unit of time between the actual moment um, of the explosion, of the singularity, uh, or the, the beginning of the expansion of the singularity. So we can't trace back any farther than that. So anything further back is speculation right now. I got you. I see your point. Okay. Now, physicists, and Tracy pointed this out the other day, physicists will often say that time began with the Big Bang. Yeah, that's, that's what, what, I what thought, they're that's talking what I about. That's, that's the way I understood it from my school. Yeah. What they're talking about is that time, in the sense of of um, how do, how do the way Hawking it? says it is that because we can't talk about anything prior to the point right. of expansion, you might he says you might as well cut those things out of the theory. He's not saying that time didn't exist. He's saying there's really no point talking about it prior to the formation of the current incarnation of the universe. So time is, it's not that he's saying it didn't exist. He's simply saying it's not important until this universe forms. Because at that point, we have something we can measure. Prior to that, we have nothing we can measure. And so we can't really talk about it. And so let's just, let's just say for the sake of the theory, time starts with our universe. So it's not, it's not that he's saying that it actually started with the universe. He's simply saying that's when it becomes relevant to us. However, since we don't actually know um, or, or even have a, a good theory, uh, understanding of um, the beginning of the current state of our universe, and now that we've cleared up the definitions, what was the actual comment or point that you were going to make? It just seems to me <laughs> an intelligent species such as ourselves it just seems to me, man, that we had to come from some sort of intelligence, that's all. Why? It just seems that some type of a designer or some type of a design said, Big Bang, Bang, be there. Because I kind of believe in the Big Bang Theory. I okay. just think that it had a cause, not just something random and not just a molecule. That went, something caused that damn thing to go bang. And, and creation started, evolution started all at the same time. Okay, so, so you've, you've, you basically said two different things that are unrelated, and I, and I want to make sure that we kind of hit both of them real quick. One okay. you said is that you don't think intelligent people could have come from anything other than an intelligent designer. Yeah, that's what I, I, believe, I don't yeah. know why that is, but before we actually get to that, I think the other one may be quicker to address. All right, all right. And that is that you, you believe in the Big Bang, but you think that there must have been some intelligent cause for it. Yeah, you know, like God up there with a cannon and Why? a spiritual being, and he pulled the string and just said, bang, now be created and evolve and go do your things now. and <laughs> That sort of thing, man. That's what I'm why, why, why do you think it's justifiable to posit a supernatural transcendent cause uh -huh. rather than just accepting that 
it could have happened by a natural cause. Yeah, and, but what's natural, though, man? What made natural? What made nature? You see what I'm saying? And how do you get to keep going back? You say what natural makes you cause. Think something Where had did to natural make... come from? Where did nature see, come from? You're, I'm you're the kind of guy, dude. I'm the kind on. of guy. I just want to know the why behind the why. That's just how I'm designed. You you're know? asking the wrong questions. You're yeah. asking all the wrong questions and all okay. of the questions. Well, maybe I'm talking okay. to the wrong guy about the right questions. Maybe that's it. Well, if you'd let me finish real quick. The, oh, reason sure. you're ahead, asking, the reason you're asking the wrong questions is because your questions presume the nature of the answer. It's like saying, um, why did the universe exist? That's the wrong question. The question is, the universe exists. What is the explanation? By asking what the explanation is, that leaves open any possibility. And it could be that the explanation is some god type thing created it. Or it could be that it occurred by natural processes that we don't have an understanding of. But when you say why, you imply purpose and design. I sure do. I sure do, man. Yeah, well, you're right. And I do that on that, purpose. That narrows the possibilities of the answers. It narrows the, the, the directions in which you can look for answers. You so basically, you you're assuming the answer and then going looking for it. And when you don't find anything that's satisfying, you feel justified in presuming that your original presumption was correct. And that's not the way science works. That's not the way we learn or understand anything. And if we have no way of investigating and no way of understanding what happened prior to the Big Bang, then it's asinine to speculate about the cause, and it's incredibly asinine to make up, oh, it must have been an intelligence because that's what I'm so most comfortable with. So you mean to tell me, with. man, you're not curious about how we got here? What's what do you mean? Norm, man? Come on. What do you that's mean? Asinine. No. That's a question that the whole human race is asked. I, I, I never How do we said. Get here? I ne man, stop, not, stop, not, stop. I never said I wasn't curious. Okay. I'm, not, I'm just saying that I'm not willing to narrow down the answer to why. All right. I'll put you on that. I'm I'll open to any answer. You're, that you're, oh, God. You're, your mind is at least partially closed because you are narrowing the possible answers to only those that you're most comfortable with. That isn't science, it's not reason, it's not logic, it's not wisdom, it's fantasy. It's comfort. You're seeking the answer that you're most comfortable with. And I'm sorry, but that's not a path to truth. I am interested in where all this comes from, but I can also accept that there may be questions that not only do we not have the answer to them now, we may never have the answer to them. So let's instead focus on answering the questions that we can ask, continue to seek out the explanations as best we can and not narrow the focus of our examination in such a way that we're making appeals to the supernatural. That's just not the way to go about it. You there? I see your point. I, I see your point, sort of. I, I really do. About 50% of it, I see. I do think that somehow or another, some type of intelligent design created us. Okay, and what created that intelligence? And see, there you go. And that's the same thing. You're right. And you can go backwards and backwards and backwards. So I don't know, man. I wanted to compliment you because you just did one of those beautiful, honest things ever. And that was you said the words, I don't know. Okay. And that's, that's it. I mean, that doesn't mean you stop looking. You know when you stop looking is when you have an answer. And that's one of my biggest objections to religion is because religion pretends to offer, an, offer answers all the answers that open, stop yeah, investigation. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. To me, if if you know, we were talking a minute ago about tracing this causal chain backwards forever. What created the universe? Well, a God. Well, what created God? Some other God. And you, you know, eventually you have to uh, supposedly get to something that always existed. Um, and so the religionists, particularly Christians and, and modern religions, say that God is the thing that always existed. And my answer, which is not unique to me. I mean, this is, this is common among mo like to know who made most God. atheists. No, my answer is there's no reason to go back one step to the God. We're already justified in accepting that the universe always existed in some form. There's no reason to, to posit something else beyond that it existed. that always existed. As far as um, we know, matter and energy can't be created or destroyed. So for all intents and purposes, as far as we're concerned, it's eternal. Now, that may not be true, yeah. but it's like what Hawking said. You can't go back any further, and in everything we know about this universe, matter can't be created or destroyed. So, it's, you know, as far as we know, it's indestructible. And we don't know where it began. So, in my mind, it's like, why give those attributes to God and then say he produced it? Just say, you know, this stuff, this matter in itself is in, indestructible and potentially eternal. So, 
you know, there you go. And, and Tracy, I got to know where it came from. Don't you get that? What yeah. I'm saying, though, no, is why, what I'm place. saying. Just, oh, my God. I don't, right, but I don't what I'm know. saying is Where did it come from? Man? There are people who say it came from a God who is eternal and indestructible. And what I'm saying is why make up a God that's eternal and indestructible when we already have stuff that, as far as we know, is eternal and indestructible. Yeah. So if we have stuff. Right, we, we have can, stuff. Where we, did that stuff come from that's eternal and if, indestructible? If it's I eternal, it, it didn't have to come from right. anywhere. It's, it's a thing that we can test and say, you know, we don't know how to make it and we don't know how to destroy it. It just seems to exist and it, we can't stop it. And that's what matter does. So matter is fairly indestructible and as far as we know, we don't think it had a beginning. I mean, there's no way, to, there's no reason to posit that it began. Well, from I'm a little confused. Else. What is the Big Bang Theory? Because from what I understand, the Big Bang Theory was when everything started to, to become. That's when no, not started to, become. to become. Molecules and so forth and no. so on. No. Big Bang. That's what you're, you're misunderstanding the theory. Am I really okay? Yeah. Basically, the Big Bang traces it back to the point where everything that exists, everything in our universe, was yeah. compacted into one tiny singularity. Right. Right, 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 right. Now, I don't want you to, I don't, I don't want to make the claim that the singularity was some. Some, some real tangible thing there. Um, but what we're talking about with the Big Bang is the expansion of everything from the singularity outwards. And it proceeds out at a rate that is measurable. And the, the force of the explosion can be measured in the cosmic background radiation. I mean, all of this stuff is scientifically confirmable. So, right, right. And it's, it's, it's still expanding, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Although now, it may slow down and contract. That's all I'm saying to you, man. That's all I'm asking. What's that? What started that expansion? Well, I'm asking. Nobody knows. Yeah, Hawking says it's un it's untraceable at this point. Nobody okay. knows. All right. All right. We have possible theories, but unfortunately, because of the nature of reality, we can't get back beyond the Planck time to the point to the, to the time of the the event. Uh, we can't cross the event horizon. Right. Uh, but there are there are some good theories and there are ideas. And the bigger thing is is that as long as e even if even if n we never had a good theory, even if everything we we found just failed and never gave us an answer. That yeah. doesn't mean that God did it ever becomes viable because that's, that is a hypothesis on its own that requires evidentiary support. Right. It needs to be supported. It can't just be, you, to make a claim and then not to support that claim or to support it simply by saying this other claim is false. I understand. So you guys are better off in your mind, more, have more teeth in your mind by just simply saying, okay, you know what? This is simply unknowable. Correct. Well, well I, would say un I wouldn't say unknowable. unknowable. Whereas, whereas that answer right there is going to have unknown my is... calling day in and day out. Yeah, it's unknown now. Right. I don't know that it's necessarily unknowable. Uh, it may be that we, we come up with an answer. Don't I won't worry. take up too much of your time, man. I mean, I'm going to... You know, go right. here okay. again, but well, damn, we dude, appreciate I, the call, I really Tracy. Like we'll go ahead. I like how honest you are about how you feel and stuff. Thank you. Here. We appreciate the call, Tracy, and and, okay. and this Tracy will will take more offline. Thanks. Yeah, um, it's all right. Yeah, we can just go to.